to our BlueJ project window, I can run the tests and we see that all three tests fail. Okay. This should not be surprising. We haven't implemented any methods yet. If the tests pass, then they wouldn't be very good tests because they shouldn't pass if we haven't written any code. All right, so it's good they fail. Um, so now, step by step, we're gonna implement methods to get our tests to pass. So let's start with the constructors. We documented the constructor, we, we wrote the constructor header, but we haven't actually written any code in here yet. The constructor is supposed to initialize the object. It's supposed to initialize all of the instance variables. Um, our documentation says what they should be initialized to. So we just need to do that now. Um, so let's do that. I'm gonna use a new keyword, a new reserved word when I'm initializing these variables. Um, and then we're gonna talk about what that word means. So I'm gonna say this, dot, whoops, this dot distance driven equals zero. And then I'm gonna say this dot fuel consumed equals zero. And this dot vin equals null. These are our three instance variables that we declared up above. Distance driven, fuel consumed, and vin. And the documentation says we're gonna set them to zero, zero, and null. Yeah. Why do we need fuel? That great question. So what's up with this? Um what does this mean? So let's this is definitely worth a comment block. This is gonna be the word this will be very important um, throughout this unit. The this reserved word references word references the current object. What might help is the word this is like the word self in Python. That might be an important connection for you. Here's something else. It's, it's usage is encouraged, but not always required. Right in this particular case here, if you left out the this dot, this code would compile, it would work, it would be just fine, okay? In other cases, if we leave out the this, it's not gonna work as expected. I don't want you to have to worry about the rules of when it does and doesn't work. So I'm going to model and I'm gonna encourage you to follow in kind, just always use this, okay? We're gonna see one example late next semester when it causes a problem, we'll deal with it then. Just use this. I also think it makes our code more readable. When I see the keyword this in my head, what I read is this objects. So this, when I read the first line of code, I say this objects distance driven equals zero. This objects fuel consumed equals zero. This objects bin equals null. It helps remind me of the connection between those instance variables and the object to which they belong. Okay. When I think it's a little abstract when I say it references the current object, like what do we mean by current? Well, in the case of a constructor, some code somewhere must have just said new mileage tracker. In fact, if we look at our test, here's an example line of code that says test tracker equals new mileage tracker. When I say the current object, the new operator makes a new object. This refers to that object we're in the process of making and initializing. That's what this refers to. Okay. Let's implement the second constructor while we're at it. Um, here, we said we would use these parameters instead. So I'm gonna say this dot distance driven but I'm gonna assign it to the value of the parameter initial distance driven. And I'm gonna say this dot fuel consumed, but I'm gonna assign it to the parameter <coughs> initial fuel consumed. And this dot vin will still be null. Often when I'm writing um, a test, a, a unit test for a class, I'm gonna have specific methods in that unit test to test my constructors. 
I didn't do that for this example with all of you. You'll have an opportunity to do that later in a pair programming activity. Um, but right now, if I compile and run the tests, they still all just fail. Oops, that's not what I wanted. They still all just fail um, because none of these tests just test the constructor. So that's just more of um, something lacking in the test I wrote than anything like wrong with our code. But we still needed to implement these. This is important, the code that we wrote. All right, so both of our constructors are now implemented. So now let's focus on one test at a time. So the first test here, this increment, our test increment miles driven, it calls the increment distance driven method and it calls the get distance driven method. So let's implement those two methods to try to get this test to pass. So we're gonna scroll down to increment distance driven and we're now gonna actually fill in the code for it. Okay. Um, here is like the textbook way of implementing this method. We would say this dot distance driven, because that's our instance variable that needs to store how many miles the car has driven, equals this dot distance driven plus miles. So remember what the assignment operator does, it takes the value of everything on the right and copies it into the variable on the left. So everything on the right means get the current value of distance driven, add the value of miles, and store that sum, copy that sum, back into the variable distance driven. For, some, for an operation so simple as adding a number to a variable, I think this is, the syntax for this is just awful. And it's not just Java that has awful syntax. Like most programming languages have awful syntax for this. I think this is awful as we're trying to learn Java because the variable shows up on the left and the right side, but there are different values involved because they occur at different moments in time. And I think that's unfortunate and tricky. Java fortunately has a better operator. So even though we won't officially like study this for another chapter or two, I prefer writing this code to say this dot distance driven plus equals or is incremented by miles. I like this syntax a lot. I think it reads really well too. Increment the inst increment this object's distance driven by the value of miles. Cool. Yep. Exactly the same operators in Python. So I'm gonna comment this out. This is, this is fine, it works. I just think this is better. All right, let's look at our get distance driven method. Um, we just had it return zero. We don't wanna do that. We wanna actually return the distance driven, which we've stored in the instance variable distance driven. Cool. We've implemented, we've now finished implementing the two methods that we started previously. I can compile this. I can switch back to the BlueJ project. I can hit run tests. Hey, and the first test passes. This is great. We're making progress. For the sake of time, um, I didn't want us to take our live coding time to like rewrite all the other methods from scratch. So if you scroll down, there are four additional methods where I've already written the Java docs and I've already written method header and the implementation is currently commented out. So we're just gonna enable this code. So I'm gonna remove the slash slash here for our increment fuel consumed. I'm gonna remove the slash slash here and delete the return zero. We can only have one return statement in the same like level, same flow, I guess. That's an odd way of saying that. Um, so these two methods are now implemented. If I keep scrolling down, here's get mileage. I'm gonna get rid of the slash slashes here. I'm gonna get rid of the return zero. This double really needs to be an int. That's totally my mistake.
Uh, if I keep scrolling down, here is getvin. I'm going to uncomment that and delete the other return. Here is setvin. I'm going to uncomment that. So I've gotten rid of all the code that was just commented out as if we just wrote it all. Yeah. So we should be good now. We've implemented all of our methods. So let's compile the class. Let's switch. Let's run the tests. And we're not actually doing any better. Um, two of the three tests are still failing. So this isn't because we haven't implemented it yet. This is because there must be a bug in the code. So let's click on this and read what it says. Yeah. Um, usually it's just because this isn't compiled yet. Let's see why. Oh, this needs to be called, was it like get something? Get distance driven. There we go. You're good to go now. All right. So let's look at what it says for this test here. The test method is test get mileage. It says it expected a value of 25, but it was a value of zero. So something's wrong with the get mileage method. You've, if you have previously co previous coding experience, you've probably run into this. You expected some output, you got a different output. You have to find the bug in your code now. You probably use various strategies. One of the most common strategies for like novice programmers is to randomly change something and run the program again and hope that it gets better. Okay, I would encourage you to find a different strategy, okay, a more effective strategy. Um, a more effective strategy is to add prints to your code. You may have done that in a previous class. Print out the value of this variable, print out the value of this variable, then you can inspect the output and try to infer what went wrong. That's not bad. Um, it's not necessarily efficient, at least when I do that. I find that on the first try, I rarely put the right prints in there. So I have to add more and more prints. And then when I'm done and finally fix the bug, I have to go back and delete all the prints. Um, and so most development environments, including BlueJay, um, and Replit has this too, although I don't think you necessarily used it in your previous class, um, has a debugger. A debugger is like this magical tool that takes a running program and lets us pause it at any moment in time and inspect the state of the whole program. We can see the values of all the variables at that instance in time. And then we can say things like, just, just run one more line of code and let me see how things change. Okay, run one more line of code. Let me see how things change. It is super powerful. And this is how it works in BlueJay. We're, we think something's wrong with our get mileage method. Cool, let's figure out what. When code is not compiled, the left column here is gray. But when code is compiled, the left column is white. When the left column is white, we have the ability to set a breakpoint within a method. So I'm going to position my cursor here in the left column on this line of code, int mileage equals. And I'm going to click, and it's going to put down a little stop sign. That stop sign means when the program gets to this point, pause. Pause before you run this line of code and give me control of my program so I can look at what's going on, okay? And then it highlights it in red. I can have multiple breakpoints if I want. I can have as many of these as I want. Well, I'm just gonna stick with this one for now. So now if I run my code, the test again, when I run it, the program pauses 
the line of code that is about to be executed is highlighted in green right here. And this new window pops up, which is the blue JD bugger. There's so much good stuff in this window. At the bottom are really useful buttons. This button step allows me to step through a method like or step through a line of code, run that line of code, step through it. This button allows me to step into a method that's about to be called and go into a different method. This button allows the program to continue running until it hits another breakpoint or finishes. And terminate just immediately stops the program right now. Okay, like once I figure out what the bug is and I need to go fix it, I just hit terminate. I don't need to keep the thing running. It's not gonna work. This pane lists all the instance variables for the class we're currently, for the object whose class we're currently in. We're inside the mileage tracker class. Here's our three instance variables. This is actually a good sign. Distance driven is 100, that's what we expected. Fuel consumed is four, that's what we expected. String is null, that's fine. So this is a good sign that at least we've initialized our instance variables correctly. Um, when we have a local variable, which we'll have in a moment, it will appear down here in this pane. This left pane um, is what's called the call sequence or the call stack. And the first element on the call stack here is the method whose, uh, where we're currently have paused execution. So this is saying it's in the mileage tracker class and it's the get mileage method right here. All of these methods are the, me are the previous methods that are still running. What I mean by that is the second row here, if I click on this, it changes me to the mileage tracker test class and I'm inside the test get mileage method. And this green line of code, which called get mileage, is the line of code where we've called the get mileage method and we're waiting for it to return. So I can see not only my program where I'm paused, like in the current method, I can see who called me and even look at the variables of the calling method. Some of the methods here in the call sequence start with like JDK internal or org.junit or java.lang. That's code that's part of JUnit or Java runtime or not us. We don't usually click on those. There's not a lot of information we're gonna get out of that. We're gonna stick to the code that we've written. All right, going back here by clicking on get mileage, I can hit step to step through this line of code. Before I do that, when I'm debugging a program, I like to make a prediction. I like to look at the values I see of the variables and predict what this is gonna be. If I've driven 100 miles and consumed four gallons of gas, I expect mileage to be 25 miles per gallon or 25 miles for every gallon. So I'm gonna step through this line of code and I can see here's my local variable mileage. It's now in scope, but it's zero. It's not 25. That is not what I expected. When there's a disconnect between what I expect and what my program actually does, that's indicative of one of those logic errors, right? This is a runtime error, this is a logic error. So I'm going to take a closer look. Um, mileage equals this dot fuel consumed, mileage equals, I'm gonna substitute in my variables, mileage equals four divided by 100. Oh, I did it backwards. If I'm calculating mileage, it should have been 100 divided by four. That's why this isn't working, okay? I've, I've swapped my fuel consumed to my distance driven. Now, some of you might be saying, okay, wait, yes, you did it wrong. However, why is it zero? Four divided by a hundred isn't zero, okay? We are doing right now, we're dealing with integer values in Java. And when we divide integers by integers, we only get integer results. Like, like Python does the same thing. So when we say four divided by 100, it's really zero point something. The point something we just throw out and we just get zero. We're gonna study integer division a lot more, um, but that's why it's zero and not like a, a, a decimal thing. Let's fix the code. Let's click on terminate. Let's go back to the file here. I'm gonna turn off the breakpoint. I'm gonna fix the code by saying, this dot distance driven divided by this dot fuel consumed.
Cool. Compile. Run tests. Success. Two tests pass. Excellent. We're making progress. Last test. Set vin fails. Expected some big string, but it was null. All right. Something's wrong with set vin or I don't know. Let's see. I'm not quite sure what's wrong. So let's look at the test. Here's the test code, test set vin. This test is failing. Let's look at what methods it calls. <clears throat> we make a new mileage tracker, which is gonna call the default constructor. I'm pretty sure that works. We've been doing that in all the other methods that pass. We're gonna be calling the set vin method and pass it this test vin that's built right here. Maybe that's wrong. Um, we're gonna be calling the get vin method. Maybe that's wrong. I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna set my breakpoint here in the test set vin method. I'm gonna set it right here. Cause I'm not sure which of these methods are wrong. So I can step into both of them until I figure it out. All right, run the test again. Our program has paused. We're about to execute the line of code that says test tracker dot set vin. Before we do so, I can look at my local variables. I have a test tracker object. I can actually double click on this and inspect what it looks like. Everything is initialized to zero or null. That's what it should look like so far. That's good. And I have this local variable test fin with this string. <coughs> that looks great. So let's step into the set vin method. So now I'm gonna click the step into button and I'm gonna step into that method. I'm now in a different file. I'm in mileage tracker. I'm inside the set vin method. I'm about to execute this line of code that says vin equals vin. I can see here in my call stack, again, I'm in the set vin method. The calling method is the test set vin method. Cool, everything looks pretty good. The parameter has this nice string, that looks great. I expect when this line of code runs, my instance variable will be updated. So I click step and it's not, it doesn't get updated. My instance variable is still null. This line of code didn't do what I expected. All right, I'm frustrated. I'm gonna hit terminate. All right, I'm not really frustrated, but it's understandable this is frustrating. The issue here is that we're kind of being ambiguous and Java doesn't deal with ambiguity. So it's gonna make up its own rules. We have an instance variable that we declared way up here called vin. And we have a parameter variable in the set vin method also called vin. We have two variables called vin, okay? And because of that, Java has certain rules based on how it's going to interpret a line of code that says like vin equals vin. While I intended this to say, get the value of the parameter vin, and set the value of the instance variable vin, that's not how Java interprets this. So this definitely warrants a comment block, slash start enter. When the parameter is named vin, it shadows the instance variable vin. What I mean by shadows, is Java has to decide which variable I'm referring to. It can't be both, it's gonna be consistent. And so it's gonna pick the parameter variable because that's the rule. And so the parameter variable, the term we use is we say the parameter variable shadows, hides, obscures the instance variable. So vin will always refer to the parameter variable. This line of code is literally saying, get the value of the parameter variable vin and copy it into the parameter variable vin. It doesn't do anything useful. The rule that Java is following is local and parameter variables shadow instance variables of the same name. So to, to be clear, in this code, vin refers, vin would refer, ah, would refer to the parameter and not the instance variable.
So this, this is bad code. I'm gonna comment it as such. Bad, I wrote bad code, okay. Comment it out, get rid of it. So what do we do? There's a solution. To refer explicitly to an instance variable, use, what do you think we should use? This, use this. Here's good code. This.vin equals vin. This object's instance variable vin is set equal to is assigned the value of the parameter variable vin. So much better. Well, a little bit better. At least it works. The test will pass. It compiles. These are good things. This whole shadow bug is really common, especially as students are learning Java, it seems. And so my advice for things like this is rather than trying to like be explicit and know the rules and all these other things, here's my better practice. Here's my suggestion for all of you. The better practice is to avoid this issue by giving local parameter and instance variables unique names. If we don't use the same name for two different things, we'll never have to worry about this issue. So let's actually do that. Let's, let's comment out this and do a better solution. Here's better, better than good. This.vin equals, let's pick a new parameter name. Let's call it new vin. So the better practice is don't use, don't give two different things the same name. And then we don't have to worry about this. Now we do need to scroll up here where we use the parameter variable vin. We gotta change this to new vin. This parameter variable has to match the one we're referencing here. But then this is gonna compile. And our tests are gonna pass because we're completely avoiding the shadowing issue. In my experience, so this, this shadowing thing I, is a contrived example I put into this one method. But in my experience, students actually run into the shadowing thing most when they're writing their constructors. So if we scroll up to that, that specialized constructor we wrote, the one with the two parameters, it is so tempting to name the parameter variable the same as the instance variable because it's like the same thing. It's really nice to name it the same thing. But if you do that and leave out the this word, none of your instance variables get initialized, but your program still runs, but eventually it crashes because something is zero or null. Um, and then you have to debug it, which is frustrating and takes a lot of time. What I modeled for you all when we wrote this constructor is I will always prefix each of my parameter variables in a constructor with the word initial. Plus I think it fits well. This is the initial distance driven for the car. This is the initial fuel consumed for the car. So by putting this initial prefix here, I will never have to worry about shadowing and I'm not gonna have to debug that code later. So that's my recommendation for you as you start writing your own, your own classes. All right, if we switch, we run our tests. Oh, I still had a breakpoint here. And disable that, continue. Hey, they all pass. This is great. We have completely implemented our mileage tracker class. <laughs>